Beyond Borders është një seri dokumentarësh ku përfshihet edhe Maqedonia, sepse pikërisht një nga nismotaret e këti e këtyre dokumentarëve, sepse është një seri dokumentarësh është nga Maqedonia, bëhet fjalë për Elita Osmanin, fotografe me profesion video makers, gjithashtu punon edhe dokumentar të tjerë, vjen e shoqëruar edhe nga Mikesha e saj që është hindi djatit, është të belge, ato të dyja kanë nisur këtë seri dokumentarësh me vizitën e tyre që ka qenë fiks para një viti, ashtu siç na treguan ato, kanë nisur me Hungarinë. Dhe tani kanë vendosur që tarin, Destinacion i radhës është Macedonia, po vjojnë duke realizuar gjirimet e tyre për të përgatitur këtë dokumentar. It's really big pleasure to have you today and also to talk about such important topic uh, that, uh, about those documentaries. Si nisi gjithshka, Elita, how did everything started here? You can tell us shortly maybe how did everything started about uh, those documentaries? Si nisi. Um, well, actually it started with a book, the book that I had written in 2021 with my sister. Um, and it was full Corona time, so we didn't have any opportunity to do live book presentations. So mm -hmm. we started bringing books around to people. Okay. And then we got an order from a Belgium reader in uh, Budapest, who lives in Budapest in Hungary. But at the same time, there were a lot of um, difficulties for LGBTQ community in Hungary, like the law that people of the same sex cannot adopt anymore, mm -hmm. um, but also the propag propaganda law that you cannot come out anymore with anything that is LGBTQ related. Um, and then as activists ourselves in Belgium, who mm -hmm. work a lot of, uh, around human rights, because let's say LGBTQ rights are human rights, uh -huh. yeah? um, we thought it's our responsibility to not only bring a book there, but like to share a story. That, so that's how it actually started. And then we said, we cannot leave it at one episode, we need to go around, <laughs> because it's so important to document these stories that nobody is documenting at all. Mm -hmm. so se dukur të kthejmë këto, ndjehem si janë, si ndjehem sot. Mhm. Mm Kështu që për shkak, për qat, për, e, që ajo shkaku, pse Macedonia, po plus edhe se nuk ka hapsirë, nuk ka e, exposure. E, sot e kësa dite ka njerëzi që që e, bën vetvrasje e i di edhe shokët e mi që edhe shoqet e mia që janë martuar me e, opposite sex vetëm për shkak se nuk tja, për shkakun e familjes mm -hmm. ose për shkakun e njerëzve papunësia. Do të si nuk kanë guzuar të deklaruan, të janë detyruar të jenë në martesa, domethënë të sekseve të kundërta po, vetëm po, po. për të kënaçur familjarët apo thjesht të mos deklaruan sepse uh, besoj edhe vite më parë ka qenë shumë e vështirë të deklarohesh e LRM të të martohesh apo thjesht të, të lidhësh uh, jetë me me seksin e njëjtë. I think the public opinion towards people of the LGBTQ community are uh, terrible. Um, there is a lot of insults uh, in the street, you know, you get called names, you <laughs> Um, you, you can even be victim of violence and, and very severe violence. Um, if you look towards the laws, <laughs> there are almost no laws to protect anyone of the LGBTQ community, um, even like for living together, you know, if, uh, because I understood that if you live together here as a man and a woman, after three years, you have the same rights as a married couple. Yeah? So you have the same benefits as a married couple. That doesn't exist for people from the same sex, yeah. like to women or to, or to male or to trends or it doesn't matter. Um, I think there is still a lot to, to, to work on, um, but politics go very slowly. So let's try to, and art can go faster, yeah. and storytelling can go faster. So let's try to educate people through storytelling and this way, and, yeah. this way, and then maybe it, faster, it yeah. can, in, in, um, can the affect the politics immediately because mm -hmm. politi it goes slowly. In Belgium, it goes so slow. Yeah. <laughs> we are famous for not having, having a government at all, yeah. you know, so it goes very, very yeah. slow. Um, but let's try with dialogue and, and communication and let's see how it goes from there. How more, how more people see it and how more you know, used to, you get to it, how more normal it becomes. What are your expectations from all the documentaries and from all this hard work that you are doing in this project? Um, I like what you say when you say uh, r make history, I, I think for sure, but also to document right yeah. now, to document uh, right now and later we can look back on it and see, okay, this is the progress that we made. Um, but to take it in a detailed way, if it can help one person, it can help one person, you know, if it can help one uh, trans kid or one lesbian girl uh, in, a, in a Muslim community and she says, oh, okay, this is possible, you know, I can, I, can, I can be myself and I can try to, you know, come out and I can try to, you know, like live like I want to live. I think that's very important. Um, like I said, I think 
I expect to educate people with it. Mm -hmm. And in the same time, tell a beautiful story with art and give artists also the chance to speak and to see how activism is linked with the art. Manager of the theater and its writer and dramatist since 2014 and since 2020, I have been elected for general director of the institution and selector of the International Festival of Hunting Drama Story. I have started my career as a writer in 2014 with the multidisciplinary project titled The Hooligan's Diary. Mm -hmm. It was structured with a book, with a performance and with a radio project that had that endured for, I think, several months. And uh, we created, uh, along with uh, Vassal of Future, our famous actor, mm -hmm. a Buto performance based on the book The Hooligan's Diary. And afterwards there was my second novel, Alma Mahler, that is based on the life of the one of the greatest women in history that I have reached to, uh, named Alma Mahler, the wife of the famous composer Gustav Mahler. Mm -hmm. It was also set, set on stage at the, as a performance uh, at the Macedonian National Theatre in Skopje. And uh, afterwards, afterwards there, are, there are, I think, over 20 dramatics that have been set on stage, different stages in Macedonia and in the region that I have signed as writer, author of text and both dramatur dramaturgy of, of performances. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last performance that I had a premiere was uh, on the 8th, 9th of March this year. Mm -hmm. it's, it was set in the National Opera and Ballet in Skopje. It's my libretto and dramaturgy for the performance uh, Les de Musique des Avignon built on the original painting by Pablo Picasso. Mm -hmm. It was sort of commentary how the painting uh, can be transformed into a performance 
by linking different uh, aspects of Picasso's life and uh, different aspects of his work with a uh, contemporary ballet performance. Mm. I've also uh, done two more uh, dramaturgy both Andrew Libretto for contemporary ballet, one at the National Opera and Ballet in Skopje titled uh, The Red Room, choreographed by Igor Kirov, and the other one in Hanka Split in Croatia, uh, titled Death and the Dervish, that is based on Mesha Selimovic's uh, famous novel. Yesterday we also met and we talked a bit, uh, briefly, uh, and you said a lot of your work also revolves around um, stories uh, about strong women. Yes, of course, yes. I, I find strong women and women generally as one of the greatest inspiration of my work because I think that the force that is coded inside a female being is something that gives her life and this life-giving energy and this life-giving power that is coded inside a female being is something that I am very that I have uh, a huge admiration for, mm. and I think that um, all these strong women that are, are that are somewhere inside my my books or, or performance texts uh, have been a huge inspiration for me even nowadays. Mm. Uh, would you see it as a form of activism? Well, of course, uh, since the very beginnings, the theater is a form of activism. It's, it's, uh, we, we cannot uh, dislink the activism from theater, since uh, when it was uh, institutionally formed in the 5th century BC, the theater was a political statement. Mm -hmm. Some very clever guy said that uh, we have to have uh, theater, we have to invent theater as something to, to give to, to the people and to tell our stories in a different way, to show everything that we have on our mind about our society mm -hmm. on stage and to bring it closer to the, to the people. Could you explain me a bit your vision of your opinion on how art, activism and human rights are linked? Together. All these nouns are very linked with each other mm -hmm. since the power that they own and mm -hmm. the way this power can be used <coughs> to, to change the world and to change one's own life. Can it? Uh, I want to believe that it can because if I don't have this uh, belief in, uh, in uh, art changing the world, I, I am on a wrong place at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. so I think that storytelling uh, is part of the civilization as we know it and if we try to distract storytelling from civilization we are nowhere mm -hmm. and uh, people tell stories because they have problems to tell mm -hmm. and by telling those stories they are trying to help to reach to one's own problem and to bring it up to the audience as a part of the collective problem that we live inside them. Do you feel that the Macedonian government is um, supporting the cultural scene or community enough? Here? Well, uh, I don't think that uh, we cannot talk what enough investing mm. in culture means because uh, there is always space for uh, wide it up, wide up these this, uh, fundings that our government gives to both the nation, both uh, institutional and non-institutional forms of culture that have been produced in that are that are being produ produced in Macedonia and in in this and in, in this sense. I think that uh, we we need to find uh, even more sources for for uh, uh, culture production beside of the funds that are given by the government, mm -hmm. and to to think about including the local communities inside it, and to to reach to different funds that are able and we are suitable for in um, in different international organizations or bodies. What is your drive? Well, I, I have this. Um, in a force that always always keeps me awake and uh, I have this luck in my life to, to work my profession by something that is uh, very deep inside my heart and soul that is my organic love mm -hmm. and when one drives by by his own love I think that he can go whenever he wants and do whatever he needs to do. Although my basic uh, training was uh, visual art, yeah. 
I decided that a large part of my life will be dedicated to fashion. Uh, when I was asked to participate in an art festival, I used the idea of male underwear not uh, only as, um, let's say, design research mm. field. I wanted to make even parody to some female brands. Just change the gender, change the type, of, but still you have part of that iconography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like those famous angels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I put angel wings <laughs> to... How do Victoria's Secret? Yeah, yeah, yes, so yes, yeah. in my case it was Victor. Yeah, Victor's Secret. <laughs> and it was even written Victor. So I, <laughs> afterwards they published uh, on the cover, even on daily magazines, like male fashion, mm. which was a great compliment. Yeah. Because, you know, it was also uh, another way of, let's say, the thing that I wanted to do in a more theoretical way later. What is masculinity? Yeah, and what does it mean today to you, masculinity? To be quite honest, uh, I'm not even sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even like fighting only for this type of rights, but also about humanity in yeah. general what does it mean to be human yeah. we have to make really big changes yeah. in my opinion i think that even so-called straight yeah. men for example yeah. they suffer yeah. because they have to meet the role that yeah. society expects from them yeah. which is stupid again. yeah yeah what makes it very toxic because yeah. then you create toxic masculinity yeah. because if you teach a boy to not cry ever how can he ever express his feelings? of course you're gonna get aggressive when you're 22 yeah, 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 you're gonna yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're gonna oh, be I don't some, know, like, marry don't know. somebody who yeah. you don't like just because somebody expects yes, from you. Yeah, or, yeah, or because you have need a family, you yeah, need yeah, to make children, yeah, yeah. you need, yeah, of course. Uh, whatever we stand for is a part of a much bigger yeah. picture. Yeah, it's an intersectional fight. Yeah. What does it mean for you yeah. to be free? When I'm connected with art, Yeah, of course. that is my space. Do you think it's part of the responsibility of the artist to create an awareness? I do believe that artists always have to comment. It doesn't have to be big stories. No. It's just personal stories. Yeah. How you react to something. In that terms, also to educate. Yeah. You know, you reminded me for one of the shows in 2000, I insisted to do the show in the Museum of Contemporary yeah. Art because the roof was in awful condition and when it was, it was raining, it was raining inside. It is the only institution that has Picasso, for example. Yeah. And for me, it was like stupidity, nonsense. How can you let the museum with that sort of, you know, collections inside yeah. to have a problem with the rain? And then I used every interview to comment. Mm. It's a shame, you know, yeah. the state of the roof and the museum. I don't want to say that I changed something, but I was the one of those people who were commenting. Yeah. And did they fix the roof? Yes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it yeah. takes some time after but that, but they did it. They first changed the director. Yeah. And then they, they got some donations, yeah. but they fixed it. To use the fashion show to send that message, yeah. it's a shame yeah. what we do with the culture. Yeah. So we have to comment all. Always. Oh. Even the fashion costume, whatever, decorating the body came out of the necessity to introduce communicative elements. Mm. That a body in its natural form, naked, is lacking mm. those elements to send a message. You yeah. know? Especially when uh, at that stage of the development of the society, when, you know, people decided to have different roles. So I'm dead, I'm, I'm chipping, I'm, I'm married, I'm not married. Yeah. I'm, young, I'm not young, and I'm a widow, and so they needed to send some message with visual mm. elements, and I think that it also explains in a way even appearance of what we now call art or visual art. There cannot be art without that power of communication. With activism you communicate some idea. Yeah. I think that's why it's like natural marriage between yeah. those two. I like when they coexist and they appreciate each other. Yeah. Even without doing anything special, just appearing somewhere. Yeah. 
I'm very passionate about, for example, trade animals. There was a period when there was a massive killing of stray animals. They were poisoning, yeah. even doing some horrible things. And I went out on a protest with my then dog. <laughs> Because I knew that um, I am somebody who n means something, that if I go there, yeah. maybe I will help. Yeah, you can make spread, a statement. Yeah, statement. statement and spread the idea that yeah. it's horrible yeah. people, what are you yeah. doing, you know? Yeah. And later on, not because of my statement, but because of my, uh, let's say, um, love for the animals, I even adopted another stray mm -hmm. dog. Mm -hmm. uh, which I took out from a uh, hike hill shelter. And again, just by posting about that dog, you know, yeah. I'm one of those people who is, let's say, changing the awareness yeah. of the animals. And so, actually what you are saying is, if you want to make a change, and it's very cliche, but that you should leave the example and trying to share that as much as possible. Yeah, and I think that this is one of the cliches that I like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it's true, because if you don't leave it, who is going to leave it? Yeah, who is going to repeat after you? My name is Teodora Cvetkovska, uh, 27 years old from uh, Macedonia. Currently I am working as a freelance journalist, but I am also the part of the trade union uh, of uh, journalists and media workers here in, in Macedonia. I'm so glad that you accept to record uh, right on this place, because uh, very close to, to this spot is the place where I literally spending my, my most of my free time. Right. That, that place is a uh, retweet meal, mm -hmm. where we are cooking food for homeless people in Skopje. Okay. That organization is maybe seven or eight years, and I, I need to mention that in the right beginning yeah. because it's a big part of my existence. I was studying medicine in mm -hmm. high school, yeah. and I got license for for nurse. Okay. And while studying uh, journalism, I was working as a nurse in the dialysis center uh, but my my dream was always to be a journalist so after finishing college I I went uh, right away to, to work as a journalist but I must admit that that work as a nurse helped me to become more, more aware of the problem of the as we say here of the normal person mm -hmm. journalism is not just the politics the government the corruption the economy that the what what's really matters are the normal people and the people, human interest human interest and the yeah. people who we are seeing on the street every day and maybe passing sometimes because they are not seems interesting for us but it's not like that and what are you trying to do with your journalistic work as I was trying with my with my medicine work to help people and to give a voice for those who are voiceless, mm -hmm. I, I, I received a award also two years ago before the pandemic because me together with the colleagues from, from other TV, TV station, I was TV journalist back then, we built a house for one homeless guy and currently we are trying to, to speak with the government mm. to have th that project like in, in Netherlands, uh, Housing First, yeah. in which we will help the people who are on the street to re-socialize and to start a new life because we know that that is uh, better than just giving them food on the street mm. because maybe it's help but not that that they need. What are the, um, the subjects you stand up for? Uh, most mostly marginalized group mm -hmm. because here we have problem with uh, Roma people mm -hmm. and how the, the, the state is treating them. I was making one story two weeks ago about shutting down the center for people who are using drugs mm -hmm. because me, uh, I'm seeing right now the go that the government is not uh, taking care about the, those people and uh, we are the one of the 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 countries in the Eastern Europe with the good results with not having that much cases with HIV mm -hmm. and now when the government is not giving money anymore for that 
I am afraid that uh, that problem will show up again, like it was the case in Bulgaria and in Romania. Um, we also came here for a documentary to see about the LGBTQ rights, eh, because it's still a very big issue in Macedonia. Uh, the laws, the equality laws, they are nowhere. How is your vision on that in Macedonia? Are people busy with, with that subject? Is it, uh, is it something that is rising, those questions, or completely still ignored? I don't think that it's, it's that much ignored, but I will mention again, maybe that's just my bubble, mm -hmm. and I'm not seeing that much the problems outside my bubble, but I can tell that it, there those questions are just coming and passing by. Um, I mean, it's not like the politicians are not paying attention, but only when when they have some use before the elections mm -hmm. or something like that. And it's very, as you mentioned, it's very sad that we only have one sh shelter. Mm -hmm. And I think the situation here in Skopje is better than the other place. And I think that the activists and also the um, uh, NGO uh, sector will need to work outside the Skopje more because Skopje is bigger city than the others and maybe we are not seeing those problems that much here because no one is, ha no one is having that much problems or not having problem at all if if see someone who is queer on street. But can you imagine how is it in some small village in Macedonia <laughs> But even when, where people are religious? We should work more, more on that because in here in Macedonia we have problem to, to speak with psychologists also uh, when we are not aware what is happening with our sexuality or something mm -hmm. we are not speaking on school mm -hmm. from the last year we had like the first um, like pilot project for having the sexual education in school mm -hmm. and a lot of people accept that but from the other hand so much didn't mm -hmm. so I, I have I, I think that the route is still long and we have still work to do mm -hmm. is that also the responsibility of, of of journalists in macedonia to bring it more in the media so it gets more normalized i think that we are changing that it's not that uh, fast but we are changing that because we are working with the activists who are working on that particular topic for human rights and lgbtq rights But I, I still think that it's very slow progress. Mm -hmm. It's very slow progress because maybe because we had so we have so many other problems like corruption, the still the, that open question for EU for the membership, the veto currently that we have from the Bulgaria, and I don't know why here people think that those things are before the basic human yeah. rights. Yeah. So people here maybe because we have extremely poverty like half million of people doesn't have like more than one uh, meal per day and they're thinking that that is more important than than some uh, kid uh, uh, killing himself because he told to his parents that he is gay. Ellie heeft net telefoon gekregen van een van onze contacten. Uh, we gingen iemand interviewen, en, um, maar die persoon is in elkaar geslagen en ligt in het ziekenhuis. Dus we gaan nu proberen in het ziekenhuis binnen te geraken om te kijken of wij zijn verhaal kunnen delen um, en het kunnen documenteren waar, waar de reden is waarom wij naar hier zijn gekomen. Let's see. United almost uh, eight years. I'm activist. Shochat LGBT United Punon Fuchizim in the community to the LGBT Nivel Local. Not at all Gustivar, Struk, Ochel, Manastir, Prilep, Legit Ashton, Strumit, the Kumanov. Not at Perchin Preture, no care no open as the familias, no Shucherin Kuyato in the moment in Chabal, no open Shumit of Preture, and you pierce a mother written discriminating Montem, you pierce a little. Normally, we would also have talked with Peking. Oh, I just know, no school spesh, I saw no, I kissed the para. Pentru că, 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 pentru că
I'm working as a member of the Parliament, uh, a member of the Commission for European uh, Affairs, equal possibilities for the men and women, and also for uh, foreign affairs. And we have also interparliamentary groups here. Mm -hmm. So I'm a member of the interparliamentary group for uh, LGBTQ uh, plus uh, rights, and also I'm a coordinator of the interparliamentary group of the youth and uh, um, the group for the climate changes and um, protect of the air pollution. I'm also vice president of the Liberal Democratic Party in Macedonia, which is the, the only one uh, liberal party. How do you see right now the current situation for people from the community who are, who are living here? One month ago, we had it here, the code for um, for the gender identity, well, the the law was blocked. Mm. It had very uh, bad reactions. It was supported just by me and uh, my colleague from the Green Party. Mm. So from <laughs> to 120 <laughs> member of the parliament, only two supporters yes. this law. The things are going very slowly. We have a lot to work on mm -hmm. in the education of the people. And when you will explain them, okay, if I'm living with my girlfriend and she is sick. In, uh, how can I go to the hospital to visit her? Mm -hmm. Because I don't have a, uh, some kind of status to visit yeah. her. I'm not her family. Mm -hmm. And I not uh, I still could not say that she's my girlfriend. I'm understanding that here the, the we are living still in a patriarchate and mm -hmm. the stereotypes are, uh, are high, but we uh, didn't even have the main uh, economic, social, cultural rights yes people are not happier here like people we talk to we still like have a situation where people are attacked mm. because of their uh, uh, sexuality yeah. uh, for example in Tetovo we have many cases uh, where uh, people who are belonging to the LGBT community they are they could not even uh, get out on the street. Mm. Uh, doctors are um, not giving them the medical yeah. care that is needed. So we still have this kind of situation. We also have a transgender uh, people who are uh, victims of uh, family violence mm -hmm. because they told uh, at home that I mean, I'm feeling like a man, I'm not. Yeah, a woman, no. or the other way around, yeah. So, uh, we need to work also on shelter centers. Mm -hmm. uh, because Do we have only, also? only one house oh. we have. And the capacity is, I think, not more than five people that could be inside. We have it also um, <coughs> attack under the the LGBT center in Skopje and I mean that it was in 2016 mm -hmm. or 17 and we still uh, have not uh, any results of this uh, I mean the Ministry of Internal Affairs still have not uh, um, started the procedure mm -hmm. in front of the, of the public prosecution mm -hmm. so in the our previous um, questions that we have it for the government, I, I asked what happened with, with the attackers yeah. and they didn't have a response because so somehow the, the uh, records from the cameras, which was in the, in the center, uh, they disappeared. From oh, the yes. yeah. Macedonia is still far away from like same-sex marriage or equal marriage, it's still very it is, long. Uh, even though I, I will start, uh, I know that I will open the debate, mm -hmm. but uh, I know uh, that uh, it won't come in front of the plenary session mm -hmm. because uh, also the, the main problem of the uh, Albanian and Turkish parties mm -hmm. who don't want to, to discuss uh, on this question, and the yeah. chairman here is from the Albanian party, and okay. he will not put it on the So he has a missing background. Yes, yeah. I'm uh, prepared to go uh, like uh, on a people to people the differently to, to explain to, mm. to everyone uh, just to, to start to changing the, the perception. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I've been in one high school when my nephew is uh, studying mm -hmm. because the nephew, my, my nephew came home and saying I hate this people and I'm saying why you are hating them? He said because our teacher said that this is uh, um, like this is not normal thing mm -hmm. they are all sick and uh, we need to if, if we are not hating them, we are uh, equal like them. Mm. Like, and yeah. I'm not. And, and he said, I'm not a gay. And like, he's 11 years old. Yeah. And he said, I'm not a gay, and I hate them because if I'm not hate them, uh, they will treat me like I'm a gay. And I went went to that high school and insisted to to talk with the teacher, and insisted like, as an MP to have a discussion with the with the. Uh, Kids, yeah. and so that the main problem is inside the the schools, and we still don't have that kind of education yeah. uh, that is necessary for uh, to prepare the kids to accept yeah. the differences. But maybe then first we need to educate the teachers. Yes, so and we've, can educate we've the tried kids. to add yeah. other programs yeah. uh, in the schools. It was uh, the previous year, maybe you remember when we started to, to talk about uh, new programs which will teach the kids from the differences and uh, for a gender balance and so on mm -hmm. and we have uh, again demonstrations yeah. Um, yeah, it was, uh, my sister was a part of it as well and yeah. she was against it so. and I, <laughs> I, re I received yes, a letter yes, told yeah, me I remember yes. so yeah. who took time if we needed 10 years to bring the anti-discrimination mm -hmm. law, <laughs> maybe we will need uh, 10 years from now to, to bring the law for same-sex communities, not yeah. even marriages. But uh, it, uh, th this uh, should not stop us or disappoint us uh, on this fight. And uh, I mean that we need to we need to do something uh, inside the education and during i'm in the parliament i will i will fight for, for this well it's very clear that here in macedonia there is still a lot of work to do it's if it comes to lgbtq rights um, i'm really looking forward to meet some people from the community itself to see from their way and their perspective how life is here, because it's still different if you're a politician or you're just a civilian. So let's check that out, let's go find it out. Oh, what's this? This? You should see the other guy. It's, it's nothing, it's just, um, I came out as trans my family but you're totally right though this this, this is nothing it's just you know your family has issues you're totally right no need for pride parades no need for sticking it in your noses no need for normalizing it no need for shit yeah. we're just attention seekers we don't get hate crime we don't get disowned and kicked out we're fucking fine. I totally agree, bro. Have a lovely day.
half is a lie Dream out of a lighthouse in the woods Oh I just I, I just realized something Jesus um this was the song I listened to on repeat the night before I came out and I just remembered it was never a sad song for me and this is the first time I've played it since and I just realized why it doesn't something feels off like why 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 does it that's why the battle never ends you know because you you start you start playing your you and I, I haven't played it since God knows when I think September like in front of an actual camera and all songs hurt all of a sudden because um, it's songs you used to like when you were someone else. Someone else that people knew and now um, that person is gone and people miss her and I miss her sometimes, you know? She didn't have to deal with this shit. She didn't have to play the uke and start crying at a song. Not even. Not crying. Look at me, big, strong, tough man. <laughs> There's a forest in your eyes A novel in your throat In which we swim in the sea Sleep on a boat But I am terrified of the open waters Need you like a drowning child needs its father Light the forest on fire Don't worry about me, I'm already burned 2019, I decide that Lewis is dead. Okay, being a very non-conforming trans man who is out but um, wears no binder, has long hair, still uses makeup, and spits in the face of anyone who tells him that he's not man enough. Sometimes it breaks me. I, it, society told me that I can't have long hair and a dress and now I try not to do that here, so it's not to get beaten up. First, you think you can handle it and hide it and not do anything about it. That's a struggle in and of itself. Then you think that if you come out online and find your community, that's where the struggle ends. It does not. And you have to tell Papa, okay, that went well. Then you have to tell Mama, oh fuck, that did not go well. January 7th, uh, tension ensued at home, triggered by the fact that I decided to come out because I was fucking done. And then my nameless sister beat me into a concussion that I couldn't recover from for a month from the primary symptoms and uh, the, the PTSD that has caused me to, to just jump out of my bed every time the phone buzzes mm. and the shivers and the memory loss and the defocus and the, if the door so much is closed is the wrong way, I, my entire body hurts. That was stuff I had worked on in therapy for, for, for a decade and just, just fucked me up. And that happened and that took... I still haven't recovered. Like my, 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 my stutter is back after years. I'm terrified of everything. If you're living through this and this doesn't amount to anything, just make it worth it. Make it worth it. Make sure that people see this. And if you prevent one of these cases, you're good. Your life has value. Because otherwise it does not. Because you're mentally ill and you don't feel good like most of the time. Especially not trapped in a body that's not fucking yours. And let's face it, this is not me not accepting this body. I love this body. It's my fucking body. I grew up in it. All of a sudden there's, there's body dysphoria. All of a sudden there's every type of dysphoria you can imagine. All of a sudden you're battling an eating disorder because you lost 20 kilos in an attempt to lose your voluptuous figure. So it's so much more complicated than you think. It's not like, how, when did you know you were trans? 
I always knew, but I didn't, if that makes sense. I know now and I don't. I know, and even when I'm 100% certain I doubt it, dysphoria comes and goes. I still don't know shit. I know what hurts and I know what doesn't. And on some days, even that is different. And when does it end? Never. Never. And I don't think it ever will. I, and I know it sounds hopeless, but that's, it's not. Life is supposed to be a battle. You're supposed to be at battle at all times. It's supposed to be a journey. Yes. Yes, and it's like, you can't just, you can stop and rest. You can take a breather for years if you have to. Don't, don't, don't be passive and don't be dead and don't be something you're not. Because nothing hurts more. There's so many people out there who are so fucking unhappy because they just don't understand that they're just not being who they are. And I'm not talking about trans people and I'm not ta even talking about queer people. There are people out there who are pretending to be something they're not and that's what makes them unhappy. And they're not even aware they're doing it. It's just because someone told them that, that is how they will be like. If there's more of us, it gives people courage. The point is to normalize this to the point where parents don't beat their kids for being queer. Where queer kids don't kill themselves. That is the point. You talk about this as much as you can. You you make sure that there's representation in the media, not media as in just uh, cinema and, and, and theater and art, but media as in just public personas openly talking about their struggles with anything taboo, quote unquote, you know, just just because people need to hear about it, and people need to talk about it, people need to talk about the good sides and the, the horrific sides of it. Because just everything that's talked about just becomes normal. And let's face it, this is normal. This is just something that other people need to view as normal. So that kids can stop dying. That is the whole point. And if you're sitting there unbothered about it, I'm sorry, you're, on, you're, you're inadvertently on the side of the perpetrator. Just wake up. This isn't about you. So many people in the world, it's not just about you. It's about the first group of trans kids who can't come out for safety reasons. It's about me knowing 10 transgender people in the Muslim neighborhood I grew up in. None of them are out. Gay people married to the opposite sex for stealth reasons, for safety reasons. I cry every time I read about a trans kid who just went, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Because I know that feeling. I, I've been through that process so many times. You've been there? I've, I've been through that for very many years and I've... God, there's nothing I haven't tried. Pills, amphetamine, uh, wrist slashing, like in the films, you know, as dramatic as possible. It's and not once did I actually want to die. Everything was a cry for help. The one person that I will not name, I mentioned earlier, when they came out as queer, not even gonna give them the label. They're Muslim, they grew up there, it wasn't easy. They have a lovely supportive mother, but unfortunately not a lovely supporting society. So after the pride last year, they got beaten up really bad, and they moved out of the country. And if you're in a position to help out kids who are like that, not help them directly, just make a statement to society because society is us mm -hmm. and unless you start doing something, no, someone else will, you know? Let's go and leave behind the sadness that we've earned But I am terrified of the open water Need you like a drowning child needs his father uh, The Safe House is a shelter center for LGBTI victims of domestic violence mm -hmm. and who suffer of homelessness. Uh, the shelter is um, um, in the Helsinki Committee for Human Rights in Republic of North Macedonia. Uh, we are opened since uh, 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, the first beneficiary was uh, sheltered in May 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, till now we have... And uh, how many people can you house here? 
five people, five people. for long term and maybe one for short term, for short like term. 24 hours. Yeah, like a crisis. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. short term. Uh, so till now we have uh, 51, 52 beneficiaries for five years and we have uh, people who work 24-7. Mm. Uh, and it's the only years. shelter? Yes, in, it's the only yeah. shelter in this uh, region. I think there is also one in Albania, mm -hmm. Streha, and here in Macedonia. There one. is no other. Are there more questions to be housed here? Yeah. Um, for now, I think uh, the capacity is okay mm -hmm. for now. So we cannot predict about the future. Is it out that you exist? I think that most of the people know uh, when they come here or when we ask how they uh, got the information about the safe house, they said that uh, someone else told them mm -hmm. that we are here and that we can help them. Mm -hmm. So that's the way uh, how information is spread. Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. And But in the same time we try to, to, to keep it more uh, like, let's say, secret, mm -hmm. of course, the, the location and everything, because Basically, we work with the victims, mm -hmm. so it's always safer <laughs> to be safe house <laughs> yeah, yeah. with the like secret location. And that's why we don't share a lot of yeah. uh, information about the of house. Of course. But basically, the community, I think, we, we think that it's informed. Yeah. We always try to find some social media or so something where where the target of our mm -hmm. uh, uh, people is uh, focused on. But yeah. It's like even assess. I think it is the best if it's go through. Uh, we we call it like mouth to mouth. Mouth to mouth. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's always the best. What okay. kind of people do you host here? Uh, most of the people who are sheltered in the safe house are victims from domestic violence. So uh, their parents are kicking the, them out of the home. Basically, we we calculate all that risks, mm -hmm. and then we decided actually if it is the right moment to do that. They can be sheltered here for maximum one year. Mm -hmm. uh, we work about, we work to find the work to... How to be independent. Yeah, yeah, to be independent. yeah and she basically uh, all the, all the, the um, emotional support through like uh, psychologists, psychiatrists, yes. whatever they need or uh, support we provide. And actually yeah. uh, through, through the three of us even also, uh, basically, we are all caregivers, mm -hmm. so we try to make them feel like at home. Mm -hmm. So that that's our basic job here. Mm -hmm. uh, like all those uh, regular things that probably they have it and in the family or maybe miss it. We try to organize like dinners, sometimes uh, lunch, uh, sometimes how to cook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes we learn also how to cook mm -hmm. from them. <laughs> so it's always like um, to provide. Um, the home atmosphere. Okay. That's the most important. I heard that there, there is no alcohol allowed, for example. Yeah. So there are <laughs> rules. Yeah, sure. Can okay, you yeah. share some? No of guests, the rules? actually. No guests. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, all what safety for the safe house mm -hmm. means is included. Okay. So no risk, like no drugs, no alcohol, <laughs> no, no guests, no violence, of course. Yeah. So all those things... No relationships in between? Uh, no, it's allowed. That's allowed. Okay. Love is allowed. <laughs> love is allowed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We even provide the same love. Okay. Also. <laughs> so, nice. yeah, of course that's allowed. But the, everything which is um, it's a threatened by the, the security, we try to prevent. Uh, sometimes using the social networks, we always tell to the we don't, uh, we don't uh, put it forbidden, but we always advise them to, to don't use those location uh, forms or like WhatsApp mm -hmm. with location mm -hmm. or social medias for uh, meeting people, dating people. Yeah. We always advise them to go somewhere further to do that, of course. Sometimes we go out, sometimes yeah. we drink alcohol. <laughs> but outside the house. Yeah. It's a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> So even uh, when they leave the safe house, they can still uh, get therapy or uh, with our associates, uh, free therapy if they need for medical uses or a therapist to talk to. So they have uh, those kind of options even when they leave the safe house. Since it only exists five years, so you, how do you get your fundings? We met Stefan. 
The committee is uh, from two years, I think, but it was um, COVID mm -hmm. time and uh, the bar was not working. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that was the plan with the opening on the bar, uh, but probably in future that will be uh, our funding. Mm. And now how do you get funds? Uh, we get funds from the Helsinki committee okay. yeah. projects from there and they gave us about sustainability on the safe house because uh, we don't have um, much donors who are willing to support this kind of services. Yeah, it's pretty hard. Yeah, and from the um, from the government, no funds no. either. No, just a half year, 2019, I think. Yes, mm. that was the only help from the government. That was an incident. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Martin, uh, I'm 24 years old um, and I'm living here temporary. I would like to go another country, but now we are cool here. My name is uh, James, I'm 20 years old. We are living here. Uh, I, uh, I live here with my uh, boyfriend. Uh, we are com very comfortable here, we are safe here and we are happy with this, yeah. really. Yeah. Uh, how long are you staying here already? Uh, almost two months. Two months? Almost two months, yes. Two months, okay. Yeah. Um, and how did you get here? How did you find out about this place? Can uh, you tell me a little bit uh, about the process that you've been through um, to get here? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Someone helped us, it's uh, our uh, close friends. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a LGBT uh, Cure Plus uh, activist. Mm -hmm in my own country. It helped us because we uh, have a lot of uh, domestic violence mm -hmm. uh, uh, in months or three or four times mm -hmm. in my, uh, our country. Because and, uh, we need uh, just uh, escaping here and uh, because we need to uh, live comfortably and together because mm -hmm. uh, our parents never let us to stay mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. or in our own houses. Mm -hmm. Last year uh, we walked mm -hmm. in the street mm -hmm. in our country, just we uh, walking like this mm -hmm. and why uh, boys uh, uh, like uh, each touching other, each like others that. like this mm -hmm. and they attacked us, uh, strangled him and mm -hmm. we have documents, we have photos about this, everything. Mm -hmm. We go to the police station but they ignore us absol of absolutely. We we don't know what uh, will be next mm -hmm. happen to us. We uh, told uh, this situation to my uh, uh, our activist uh, friend. activist friends. Uh, he told us uh, we can uh, help you, but you need to escape mm -hmm. uh, absolutely from here. Uh, we had so much trauma, and finally we escaped, and we are happy here. Yeah. Yes, I know. Uh, Maybe it's not the best option, but it's good mm -hmm. till now. And we are happy here. Do you do you miss home sometimes? No, no, no. no. And your family? Uh, yes, yes, yes. But uh, our home, I mean our country, mm -hmm. no, no. no. But for our homeland, never. No. Yes, just for family, for maybe family. some no. friends. friends. Some friends. Yes, yeah. but. No. And do you keep in contact with your friends? Yes, and yes, yeah. yes. And they are happy too. For yeah. us, yes. Yeah, that you are yeah. safe. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Yes, they are happy for us, and we are happy also. Yeah. To be here. How do you see the future now? Uh, we would like to go Western countries, one mm. of the Western countries, uh, and I don't know when will mm. it happen. And we will get married. Yeah. Maybe we want soon. to oh. get married. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> and we would like to adopt the children. Okay. But it's impossible now. Mm. I hope uh, God will help us. We want to be a big family. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs>
I'm, I guess I'm intro, eh? Some kind of? Yeah. <laughs> How long are you working with woods and all these things? Very long, very. More than 30 years. But I work also in the different kind of material. Mm -hmm. I work in uh, stone mm -hmm. also. I work on painting, on murals, on classical painting, and uh, metal also. I work carving in wood, carving in stone. So I like to give bigger picture in yeah. art, no, just focus on the one thing. Yeah, diverse. The, yes, yeah. yes. I like art, art is my life. Mm -hmm. All my life is gravitate around art. I know that I am uh, different than artists and I am a look the, the, the world uh, so much different from the other people. Mm -hmm. So, so much different. I look color, I look uh, forms, I look uh, everything different. So I find the way to make all my interest in the artwork. More and less my life is about uh, art, mm -hmm. and literature and philosophy. Mm -hmm. So I spend more 90% of time alone. So I like to be alone. Yeah. It's very neat for my my nature and my art, mm -hmm. and I like that. Yeah, I like that very much. Yeah. Need a lot of a long time to. Yeah, to yeah. think and yeah. to create, to be creative, yeah. to be um, focused. Yeah. Focusing is more important to me. I discover, I made many mistakes, which is normal yeah. in the art world. Did you study art? Yes. Yeah. To the same degree I do. Mm. So I, I study in the in the, the um, in the school and also private study. I work uh, art from private lessons, uh, mostly for the stone uh, sculptures. Mm. I very much like to learn the stone, how to carve, how to make the form, how to make everything. Uh, with the private tutor. Teacher. Mm -hmm. What are you trying to express with your artworks? I, w I would like to express myself on my authentic, original way. That's more important to me to get any form of social recognition. I don't like that I'm very uh, passive yeah. person about opinion of others. I don't, I don't really care. Yeah. I must be honest. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's also a good mindset, I think. You know. Well, maybe. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure how good it is, mm -hmm. because in, in this uh, circumstances it's better to be a uh, good manager about selling art. Yeah. But I don't like, like to force things. I don't like to... Just to flow? Yes, naturally. Yeah. naturally, naturally. If, if you go, go. Mm. If it doesn't, I can do much about it. Mm. So, so I accept it. I accept everything. Mm. Are you religious? I believe in the philosophical way of look. If some phenomena exist, you must recognize their existence. Yes. Mm. yes. People call himself a religion, judge another. Mm. It's because don't understand true nature of the religion. Mm -hmm. Religion knows about the hate, mm -hmm. it's about the love, mm -hmm. it's about the acceptance, yeah. it's about tolerance. Mm -hmm. It's not about hate, the different different color, different sexual orientation, mm -hmm. different point of view, different mindset, different whatever, different uh, food on the table. Yeah. Some eat meat, some don't. Yeah. You must accept the difference. And diversity is the beautiful thing. It is. It is beautiful thing to live in the diversity. Mm -hmm. The unification of the phenomenon is what scares me. But things are changing. It's not... Mm, in which way? In the good way. Yeah. It's not everybody judging, not everybody 
it's uh, about LGBT, for mm -hmm. example. In this time, people are more open-minded about that. More open-minded. The process is slow, but yeah. they move forward. Yeah. So I guess we have time to accept what is a natural thing to accept. Mm -hmm. And the law is law, what is judging, what is hitting, about law, you can judge law. Yeah, I think normal people will never judge law. Yeah. Do you agree with me? I agree with you completely. <laughs> <laughs> new reality is new reality, you must accept what is, what is uh, reality. Mm -hmm. You can never fight reality, it's a losing battle uh, from the start. I like the way you think. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Ну, че ви чашки се от Призрен, 1985 от фабриката, тие се от Югославия се печати. Ако се на Палеони негош, да, че автентично е... Речеме ова софрата што е синијава, таа е од 1890 некој е таа, толку е стара. Да, и јас ја реставрирав таа. Иначе се кирчето, онде од месинки од Јордан, овако се канело на свадби порано со овакви шишиња шарени, карти ги викале, карта, така ја викале. Овие не се многу стари, овие се 30-40 години и нешто така се, поише се украси. Ова јас го имам правено за шишето тоа, металот. Вау. Да, така нешто. Бојата, види ја бојата. Вау. Што би рекле, ние Рубин Карвин. Прекрасно венце. Да. Thank you so much. Thank you. Сама. Благодарам. What's inside? У кој? Што има? У ова? Дуденка. Дуденка. Срцевина од дуденка. Значи од самата гранка се вади, срцевината е жолта, тоа што такво. Ова е срцевина од бадем и се бои ракијата со него. Значи, треба да биде суво дрвото, значи сува гранка, не да биде а, со сокови внатре, да речеме сурова, и со тоа се добива, се става во ракија и се добива оваа боја. Виски боја или коњак боја, ние шо викаме. Оригинал. Што поеше, да речеме, седи во ова, потем на боја. Кој ще пушта? Еко! Ова дуденка, таа ракија може да снимите слободно. Се вади срцевината, срцевината е жолта. Искача, што пој ще стои по-жолта? Ракијата. Супер, тоа е природно нешто. You put in your plate and you're eating with hands, okay. with chest, okay. just to have the proper taste yes. of everything okay. in Macedonia. Vova Zemia. Во оваа земја проста и водите ти се диви, а цветот ти е сув. Во оваа земја, када дојде да се будиш на месечина и со за да заспиваш за време да ми дадеш. Ти реков, мирисаш на трева, рече ти, ти си мојата проста. Тебе очите езеро ти се во нашите води, реков јас и нашиот камен што само ти знаеш да го редиш и од него збор да извадиш. От и раката ти е таква, камен, крши, брек, рони, како тивка, вода, 
a nikoj ne peznaja. Ova zemlja prosta zgazif jas bos. Takov i ki si odam. Ki ti nasadam petuni in reči ti. Ponif ti, ki gaziš. Da ne miri sa postelata. A znaješ, da odam na, da ka jaz ti go budam sonceto i ti postilam peruniki pod pernica, za da bideš mirne na budanje i kapini ti stavam na usnice, da ne te odnesa vetrot. Veleše, ne menosi mene, ne meduva o ti, spijam v tvojite oblaci, nikoj što ne gi razbira, lud moj. Mi veleše, da ka sum lud. Če pomine vreme, ti velef jaz, ko ga si tako znat, Može bi i ke umejat, ke prorokuvat. Nauči me za sonce to veleše. Očito ti se vone go, ti še potof jas. I ti go dopirov prstot so rozmarine i bosle, ko ti sakav v gugutkata da prestoram, da te olesnam. Pticiti vodat ljubov samo po tvoj prozorec mi veleše ti. Mojo te odam na zatvoren. Jaz ti vele, v ovaj zemlja prosta, štarkovite dojdo, a so tebe kaj mene, so tebe i ke si zaminat. I tvoje to stapalo, pa ke se vrati, da mi gi gazi vodkite, da mi mirisa denot na obavi na nautro. I ke sadiš ti bilki gorski v mojo dvor, ona mu, Kada bos dojdov i bosi ke odime prostu kon tvojeto ezero v tvojite oči, po tvojeto staklo odamna i skršeno proklet da sum v ova zemlja prosta ti se kogaš imaše pernice. Noja mi zborna moba. Bidi so mene nežna, razbrana. Pa to je sum ti rekel. Što očekuješ? Ti jo čustvovaš nežnosta na mojata ljubov i koga boli. Nema drama koga ima monotonija. A i na što liči toa? Na fiktivna ljubov ne može da je čovjek postojano nežen. We don't own the poetry. What, the, what do I mean by that? If I write a song, it's so difficult to me to say I wrote this. No, I didn't write it. Because the poets, I think, are just the vessel. Something comes to you and you give it to the world. Mm. So, in one sense, that's why I don't like slam poetry. I love it to perform. But the thing of uh, giving points, mm. like, it's because I don't feel like poetry slam need to be like competitive mm -hmm. because maybe it's a cliche but everybody's a winner since they wrote something. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't like competitions at, yeah. at, at, at for, all. Like, yeah, for mm. art. It's also nice some, sometimes to award a, mm. a piece or a performer who, because in Belgium it also really pushes your career. Like, you know, if you win a prize, then you will hit the newspapers, you will go to the radio, you will do this, you will do that. So it really pushes you as an artist also to make a profession out of it. Zašto ni mi kažu vaš kada odiš? Zato što jaz ne ja znam svoja ta destinacija, nemam vizija za evropeizacija, ni tu viza da preminam granica i znam prisilno ki me simnat na nekoja nepoznata stanica. Zašto ne mi kažu vaš kada godiš? U kurac patov što ne se doduva, se čustvam ko bebe koji tuku što prooduva, jedan čekor, dva čekora, treti. Jeve me veke v kolona, čekam red da go zem svojeto ime i prezime i brojot od svojeta lična karta, za da može sistemot od moj život da napravi rezime koja sum, što pravotam i što pravam. Sistemot nego interesira koja na vistina sum i što sakam da pravam, sedo je kao ušteden pijun za vošakot, ne im rodam, za da imat protiv koga da go odigrat matot. Šah mat.
Мордан, коем благом сам молод человек, кинем на шах. Знаешь, пак не битно, кот я даде матки, играме пак. Повторно, влагаме тука, знаешь, дека флоуто е слободно. Кое на ред, дали сам я, спиум два, ставам тука. Айде, кени, влагай, пукай. Дай ми шанса, дай ми, дай ми шанса Влегувам на шахмата, сме на иста табла Има само 64 полиња, без бре комбинацији Не бре, те молам нешто направи Не е битно кој ќе победи Или е важно Не сакам да се чувствува, никој е тажна Пошто играта е игра за да се игра, не зна некој за да победи Мене ми е преку куроците над превари Ово е победил вамо, ово е победил тамо Ово е овамо, ово е намо Ке им се посера на сите ебани награди Сима, победи нешто направи, ајде брат. Јас сварно не знам да рецитирам фристал, пошто кој рецитираш фристал треба се да ти текне во моментот. А јас живеам во иднината. Ја не градам кариера ради реда, туку да ја кренам свеста. Вела ти да трета светска, што тоа мене ми значи кога во глава имам борба секој ден. На секој ден, брат, треба да играме шахмат, а преска ја да в табула се заебава. Животот е шах, брат, животот е шах. Ко не игра шах, кој ќе игра? Ама дали си пио Кралеви. И кога си кеке кралици, тоа е многу интересно. Сака ќе ти кажам нешто што не знам дали си го размислил. За да бидеш крал, идеш чекор по чекор. И идеш на спеко. А доколку си кралица, ти можеш да идеш од едното поле до другото. Додека кралот не го може тоа. Дали е фер што го зборам сега ова? Симон, помогни ми, гледаш дека не ми доаѓаат никакви рими. Мислам дека треба да измислам милион и триста причи. Кога рецитирам фристал, можам брат да смислам, пошто мојот мозок е ебена машина. Добивам идеи ебен од иднината, кој што преска ти кажав. Шах, мат. Не се дава. Возам точак од тркала што врти. Си викам во себе, можам, што и да ми текне. Ке сврти, сврти еден број, брат. Знаеш што е потребно. Потребно е сонцето да влезе во тебе витамин Д, да бидеме со едно, едно со се. Не разбираш? Не го разбирам, понекогаш не го раз, не го разбирам, сега го разговараме, не знам што куртука ни е бараме. Ке нема на некој документарен филм во Белгија. Тоа е прекрасно. Полека, полека ни е градиме империја. Ке си даде жена, може би, ке ти речат, женија, но каде брзаш, уште си млад, некој ке ти речат, си стари, да што ќе приезе. Или европски документчиња, идеме, емигрираме во Белгија. Зашто секој на секој љубо море? Зашто секој гледа во огнот да гори? Пошто кај што има љубо море, а море да има љубо море, претоставава. Сите сме едно, нема граници. Сите сме едно. Тука сме дојдени за нешто. Јас се ти ке направиме нешто вешто. Не мора еден против други граме шах да бидеме непријатели честно. Можеме да градиме царства, замоци и многу работи. Да изградиме живот по-добар ко што кажа мојот човек. Да срушиме луѓе. Кој се борат со копија, ние со мисла и срце ќе направим и освоиме све, како Александар Паланга, сме додени на овој све. О, е Хенрид. Това е круто. Да. Я дрема за свет, без граници. Но, ти не си как рефуги е страгалинг. Екстремно пазалт, а я сега ми се, как, какво да хел е сега с нашата социјата? Too many humans, but suffering from lack of humanity. But guys, is it our fault? Or maybe is it how we were taught? I honestly thought and I still think that being a human being is the greatest thing. And there is much more than money and power to be achieved. And this game that they are playing, it's not for me and it's way too cheap. Never forget that you are an amazing human being and not some freaking cheap and now you can call me too insane but i feel like we are all the same so just enough of this country is dividing reality and let's overdose on fantasy let's overdose on fantasy fantasy but fantasy is written like this like fan <laughs>
so you can do it wherever you, you want mm -hmm. for example like we did freestyle so for me personally i do performances wherever i go yes. when i sit with my friends or in some coffee bar you can stand up and say mm -hmm. something in the boss. he inspired me to start you know publicly showing my i'm not into slam poetry as i'm into writing short stories mm -hmm. but to me it feels like you know the written word has a certain power a certain, yeah. certain energy you know yeah and we like artists whatever we do we are like responsible because uh, you know whatever you say has some impact yeah on the outer world yeah words are very powerful big in the five, four centuries, let's say, the music and the poetry was only for the royal families. Mm. Only they had the privilege to read and to listen to the music. Mm -hmm. Right now, we all have it for free. Mm -hmm. So we just need to give it more to the public spaces, I think. For me, I think the main thing is entertainment or inspiration. Mm. And usually like, uh, because I have a production, I make movies and TV shows and stuff like that. So usually the, the music stars, they, they think about earning money, they think about mm. stuff like that. They don't think so much about inspiration. Mm. And these guys are inspiring people, mm -hmm. uh, planting a seed. Mm -hmm. And when that seed will, will grow and when the teenagers now who are listening their songs, when they grow up, that seed will grow. So I think a big change is, is coming mm. in this country, in this region and the whole world, mainly because of positive people. Ja sam nesmnogu retardiran, koga recidiram, sakam da već smiram.